Hi guys, very good morning to you. Welcome to the video number 329 and uh, in this video we are going to actually answer a couple of uh, the basic level questions on Excel. Uh, so if you are appearing for the Excel interview or just in case if you want to have a, you know, the kind of the idea how the Excel test actually appears, you know, uh, when you go for the interview, then you can surely, you know, watch this video. So I'm Ajay and I run this channel and I've been running this channel from the last two years. So we have a lot of videos on Excel the VBA and access and access VBA if you are new to the channel what you can do is you can go to this playlist and you will find here different 42 playlist you know different categories actually so a lot of you have asked me yesterday also somebody commented that if they want to learn the VBA then how to start so as I always say uh, in this video also I'm repeating first you need to start with the Excel VBA introduction series and then you can go with the Excel VBA loops which you will find here somewhere when you scroll it down and then you will need to learn Excel VBA collection loops and then you can you know go ahead and uh, uh, learn the other things like excel vba uh, file handling this is the another playlist where which you you will learn that how to deal with the folders when you have the different different files in the folder how to move them how to copy them how to compile the data you know and then you need to understand this you need to watch this as well excel vba deal with the workbook sheet handling and then of course you can watch all those excel vba activity videos action videos where we have talked about how to connect the outlook how to connect with the powerpoint so like this this one i'm talking about connecting powerpoint with excel so you know these are all the extremely highly advanced uh, extreme um, extreme actually they are the extreme videos they are highly advanced videos so you can check that out now this is a video i was talking about excel vba access interview questions you will have already find here 32 videos which i've uploaded two videos 32 videos on excel interviews on eba interviews on access interviews on access vba interviews right this is going to be the video where we're going to discuss about all these questions and very quickly because this is going to be a little bit of basic and intermediate kind of a stuff right so i have this first question in front of you guys on the question says actually highlight cells uh, highlighted cells are the answers use column d and bring the result in yellow one so we want to actually bring the result here and the answer should look like this. so basically what is happening you need to move these cells here right the point is uh you can simply use the you know the transpose option as well for example you just uh, uh you just copy this and you can do here for example you go here and use the paste special alt e s you can go to the paste and paste special and you can use the transpose right so this is also correct because nowhere here we have written that uh if any any changes happens here for example if i do the change here you know that this will not change here right just in case if you're looking forward to that also because we want to automate it Instead of using this transpose uh, the copy the data and using the paste special what you can do is you can select this entire table and you can go to your this uh, you know, formula bar and you can write here the transpose function if you write the transpose function function it is going to give you the table so i'm going to select this table completely and then instead of pressing the enter which usually you know we press you need to press ctrl shift enter the moment you press ctrl shift enter you would see that the curly brackets are coming which is a sign which is an indication that your formula is entered as an array now the good part about this is so what is the difference between this and this is obviously if you do any changes over here you see that this portion is completely going to change the yellow ones right that is a, a reason that you prefer this option i think both the answers are correct because nowhere we have said that changes happens in the vertical table uh, same should reflect in the horizontal table so i think both the options are correct right the another way of doing it is uh, if you if you talk about uh, the third solution or if you talk, you know uh, talk about the let's say um, they have specifically told you that you got to put some formula over here you know so now what you can do is if you press equals to sign you know that if i drag this formula left to right three will not come because this is going to in increase the column number so you will have here zero if i press f to show you here right because when you drag the formula in the horizontal direction uh, the basically the formula actually increments the uh, column number not the row number but here you want actually the d4 sorry uh, yeah d4 and here you want the d5 so what you can do is in that case there is a way of doing it uh, you can simply write here you know for example you can write here um, the d which is the first cell is your d3 Right. now if i just drag this d3 left to right let me see what will happen now for d5 d67 you know automatically comes you can use the indirect function here so indirect is a function if you don't know any, anything about the indirect function please go and watch the playlist excel indirect function you will understand right now this is the interview in the interview i 
don't expect you know that you are not uh, knowing about these formulas right indirect is a kind of advanced function but what the exercise actually we are talking about it's more of a like it's not really so you know so indirect is a function which you should, must know it's very useful function indirect means that indirectly if i go in this cell g9 the g9 it will pick up the cell address which i have written and in the g9 as we, as you know we have written the d3 so it goes in the d3 so that's a, that's how you can use it the good point of this indirect is if i drag the formula left to right g9 will change to h9 and then i9 d9 as the excel rule right? so automatically when you drag this here what will happen your formula will be h9 and in the h9 we have written a cell address which is called the d4 and it will capture the value of the d4 and in this way you can really you know this cell referencing right so these are these are the three methods you can use first manually transpose it second use the formula as the transpose and the good way of doing it is as you know use the indirect function it first of all these references okay second uh, the question which comes is in the highlighted table restrict user to enter year greater than 2010 so if i write here anything as 2011 let's say it should stop me entering this year what you can do in that case is uh, let me just change this back so guys we can use the data validation you just select this table and go to the data and uh, click here in the data validation and in the data validation this allow you can write here that name you know the date what 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 it has to be well any date uh, it is going to be allowed if it is less than you know 2010 so you can write here 2010 so enter a year uh, greater than 2010 so that means you can write the date here which should be uh, uh, less than your 1st of January 2010 so in this way also it can work you know this is more of a now specifically for the date so but you know you have the only years so I'm just telling you actually if you have a date here just in case if you have the MMDD format then you can use this option but since it is just a number so I can use the whole number as well Right, so in the whole number, I just write that it has to be less than 2000. Uh, right, so allow any number which is less than 2010, and in the error, you can write here uh, to greater than uh, greater than 2009 is not allowed. For example, this is what you can do, right? Make sure that this should be stopped. Press OK, and now once it is done, you see that if I enter this year, this is going to be acceptable the moment i write i should write let's say 2011 it should not allow me greater than 2000 is not allowed we try it right so even if you had tried 2010 it is not going to work right so this is how you can use the data validation let's go to the question number three can you put the vertical row in a horizontal such that if any changes happen in the vertical table horizontal table should automatically changes this is exactly the same thing you know which i was talking i have already explained this you can use the transpose go here and you can write here in you know equals to transpose so i'm just going to write here transpose or you can use the indirect function as well i'm not really going to explain that again uh, we have already seen that in the question number one so to shift enter this is what you need to press if you press only enter you will not be able to do that this is how exactly it looks like guys you can see here so the for the errors what we can do is uh, you can simply just you know give them the white font as well or you can hide them that's fine Right. so any changes which you do here in fact i should have actually started from uh, d3 but that's fine you know you should know the concept so if i do any changes here let's say i'm going to make it december changes will reflect here as well in this way also you can do that right simple question number four steps will you follow if you want to do the same formatting in different cell multiple times so i want actually this to be pasted here 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 so for example if i write here 77 you know i want to bring that the same formatting here let's say so there's a way of doing it what you can do is you can use the format painter if i click here and i you know click here you see that this is going to be formatted so you can write that first select the cell and then go to the home tab under home tab click on the format painter and then go to the destination cell and click there this has a problem the problem is that every time if you have to do it you will have to go back here and use the format painter and then come back here because once you paste it you know paint brush actually disappears so you again need to start it from the scratch but there is a way of doing that and the way is instead of doing the single click you can double click this I double click here now what will happen this is you know as uh, you, you see this paint is coming so if i click here this is not going so i can click anywhere and the formatting keeps on going so this is the another way of doing it. So double click here. When you are through with this, back here and this paint will gone or maybe you can press escape. 
this is this is gone you can see that now there is no paintbrush so single click first click first click for the multiple entries multiple times let's go to the question number five would you add cell f1 in the vertical table without using any formula so basically you see that we have a table here 100 200 300 and 400 and we want to add 10 to every item 110 210 300 but we, do, we don't want to use this kind of app which which would you know do this kind of a stuff that i freeze this 10 and then i drag it down this is a very common question you know they ask you because this is a very common feature which you must know if you don't know it then that means you know it's a time you should really work hard on excel now what we actually want to do is i don't want to use any formula guys so you, you just copy this and select the entire table and then go to the paste special or the shortcut is alt es i go to the paste special and alt es will also take you to the same window and then here you can add this because we want to add it if you want to subtract it you can press on the subtract divide multiply so i'm going to add it right me make sure that before you use this you, know, add, you should be on you should have your selected the range properly range where you actually want to add it if i press ok this is how it would come 110 210 310 and 410 this is how guys it's going to work right? you can add this in this way all right so let's go to the question number six what is the total sale for the item and the size as mentioned below so we basically have size item and the sale so we have the same item coming again and again as you can see xyz you know every time the size basically the size differs so let me just put it here the medium Okay, because I think the medium is not there. Um, uh, medium is not there. So now XYZ item has a medium size and then it has a small size and then it has a large size. And same for the other items like for example IMH as well. Now here you need to find the sale of this item. Uh, XYZ having the large. So how are you going to find that? Now there are a lot of ways of doing it. You can use the index function. You can use the VLOOKUP function as well. Right? In that case, you need to first of all make sure that these values are going to be unique because if you use the VLOOKUP directly here, you will always have the answer of you know, this sale for the 45 because VLOOKUP picks always the first item and it is not a good idea to really uh, work you know, with the VLOOKUP on the repetition if you have a repetition in the lookup. So what we can do is we can actually combine these uh, items quickly and we can make them unique. This is how I'm going to drag this. Now every item is unique the item is unique i can simply go ahead and use the vlookup so i'm gonna use the vlookup vlookup and also use the index so for value uh, just combine this so that you can make this unique now xyz large is going to be found only once in the table so you start your table from here now you pick up the fourth column because if you start lookup from here which is your now lookup which is a unique value this sale actually is going to fall on the you know, fourth column so you write the fourth and zero and that's it there we go of the sale 22 is it coming correct well it is coming correct right so if i just change this to let's say small it's going to give you the 45 and if i want to make it the medium this is going to you know give you the same uh xyz 45 well i can change this to 88 and there we go okay. same goes for this uh, if i change this to imh let's say see that i'm getting here 35 if i change this to small it should give me 35 Okay, this is coming again same so I can do one thing I can change the value here 88 right and now I can come back here just to check if it is working or not it's working so in that way you can make these values actually unique right so this is fine uh, let's go to the last exercise uh, so how many items are there ending with the S so we want to find that in this table ex excluding the header in this table let me just give it a color uh, how many items we have which is actually ends with the S so there are uh, two ways of doing it which i can think of right now one is using the wild character and the second is simply using the right function so i can you know use the right function here and i can extract the last character which is s if you press enter in, uh, i'm so sorry actually you need to find the one from the last character when you drag this formula you will have here the last character and then you can use the counting function so in the counting function i give the range and then what i want to find is uh, I can write the S and in this way you will find that there are five actually items which ends with the S There's another way of doing it. You don't have to then you do all this, you know different different You don't have to use the tape the help of these column helpers You can directly say that count if and I want to count uh, in this table the items which ends with the S So this is how you write in the criteria you write the in the quotes star and S star means that it can hold any n number of characters so anything which comes before s it is allowed but after s there is nothing so you will have the same answer 
second question is that how many items have n as second last character so in the second last character again you can uh, do one thing you you first need to find the right from the right extract the two items and then when you're going to drag this this is how it looks like and then to use the left function again you can use this in the same function as well i mean you can combine left and right but just for the sake of you know to give you the clarity i'm using it in different columns now from here i will extract the uh, you know the first character ultimately this becomes the second last character of my you know column you can see here t is in the second o is 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 the second last character and e is the second last character and ultimately i can use here the function called count tape and i can select the table and in this table i'm going to find it out n and this is how the table would look like one we have only the one item which is this one ring which has actually n if i just like to you know make this let's say n a n h should give me the two and have the two here right if you know the use of the wild characters then what you can do you can use simply the count if you don't have to again use this left and right you simply go in this table and in this table now what is the criteria so the criteria has to be how many items have n as a second last character now if i write here n and question mark that means question mark means we use it this is a wild character question mark means one question mark means one character only you can go ahead and watch excel vba count and some family playlist that have talked about these wild characters detail right so if i write n question mark then that means the first alphabet is n and afterwards there is no there's just one alphabet but because we want to make it second last character so before n anything can come so this is how your condition would work so anything before n but then after n there is just one character it's allowed so when you put it within the quotes and you press the enter this is how you get to see okay. so this is how uh, you can use the uh, the question mark so star means that it can hold limitless characters and question mark means it can hold one character if i write two question marks it means that it can hold two characters if you write three question marks that means it can hold three characters so this is all about this uh, excel uh, test i hope you like this um, you like this video any comments anything you want to ask me please leave your comment and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, we'll be discussing some more stuff in the coming time thank you so much for watching